My name is Eddie. <laughs> Welcome to Lansda Local. Uh, gears and uh, and riffs and and brews uh, like name to name to pending. Be, yeah, name pending. Yeah. Uh, I am Uncle Eddie, and this is Scott. Just Scott. <laughs> Scott the American. <laughs> Scott the American. <laughs> Ola England is my father. Ola the sweet. It's the local. Uh, Let's turn my phone off. <laughs> Lands the local uh, rig stuff. Uh, name to be announced. Uh, basically, what we're gonna do is uh, talk gear, and you know, hopefully, as we do this, we'll uh, get to go out to shows and talk to people about their gear. Uh, if you guys have someone in mind that you'd like to have on our show, uh, you know, we'll reach out to all the other like uh, local bands and stuff like that, and figure we could start with me. Uh, nice and easy. This last year, we released uh, Here I Reside with Mesa Glow, and uh, it was an awesome experience. We recorded it in the Gradwell House in New Jersey, and the guy Dave's great. Um, I brought this uh, spaceship here, and I uh, thought we could, we could talk about it. So, so yeah, uh, we can start at Signal Chain. Uh, I'm using a Schechter Classic C1, which has been since vaulted. Uh, just straight stock. I didn't do anything to it yet. Uh, yet. I got Seymour Duncan JB Jazz, or uh, Seymour Duncan JB, and mm -hmm. a Seymour Duncan Jazz. And it's got a five way selector. I'm pretty much only ever in two positions position four, position five. It's a split coil in both. So here's my clean tone. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple, straightforward. Then, if it's ever a heavy part, go to the humbuckers with the OCD, obviously. Uh, my backup here is another Schechter, class, uh, Schechter Diamond Omen 6. I pretty much never use that, only uh, when you break a string or something like that. I actually <laughs> tried to wire in some, uh, some Seymour Duncan. This is a JB and a Jazz as well. I put a coil tap in it. I didn't know you did that. Yeah, and uh, I don't know how to solder, so only the neck pickup works <laughs> for now. That's all you need. <laughs> so, yeah, signal chain. Uh, check the classic into a Ernie Ball VP Junior. It's pretty solid. I like the sweep of it. There's a little bit of a, there's a dip switch in here to change uh, the sweep. So right at the end of the toe, you get a little bit of a boost, which is great. For I like how it's no bullshit. It's just like a metal, yeah, like frame. It's not. Like no, a lot of them. A lot of them do, do say that there's a there's a there's a string in here that will break. So that's the only yeah, yeah. thing. But it's never broken on me. Just you know, I try not to go crazy on it. Uh, next. String prices are cheap too. Yeah, but I just never have it on backup. <laughs> and then straight into a, an OCD. Try and true. If you want to hit that one. Try and true. OCD. Can't go wrong. Nice and dirty, too. Tone usually a little bit before noon. I try to keep it a little bit darker just because. The box and this guitar is a little bit brighter. Drive, I try not to go too crazy with it. I'm on high pass pretty much all the time. And set and forget it kind of thing. Uh, after that, we're going into the Earthquaker Devices C Machine. That pedal is great, but it can get kind of crazy. So I try to keep it as tame as possible. Only like that one. So, just a nice little. Pedal is the depths. It's a, a univibe pedal, 
might be one of the first. This, this is the second pedal I ever got. And it, I don't really have a compressor on this board, so I actually use it as kind of a, a, like a compressor for any like tabby part or anything like that. Something uh, like pop. Yeah, so I, we, we were playing this one song. We, we didn't record it, but whenever we play live, we would play this tabby song. Actually, I have to go into drop C. Oh, I'm in D standard always. You drop it to drop C. So you get this nice, like, it basically makes like any guitar sound better. to keep it a little bit lower so you're, you don't have these like thin tap sound but with maybe just a little bit of reverb a little bit of shim and then from the depths I actually go down into the nemesis delay uh, first of all, Source Audio, I love you, and these are my workhorses. If I could go with a pedal, uh, a pedal board, and just have three pedals, it would be OCD, Emesis Delay, and Ventress. You really can't go wrong. They're, they're like the powerhouses. Uh, so, when you heard in the intro, that's actually the intro uh, from the ground off of Here I Reside, and I, you go onto an app, and I downloaded the Water Temple, Delay by, I forget who makes it, but it's a, I think it's their Helix mixed with a sweeper and you get a nice You get a little bit of like, kind of octave stuff going on, there's a little bit of shimmer on it. Like octave. So, is the octave built into the Nemesis? Like, so is there like a preset with an octave? Yeah, for sure. They have um, Shifter, which you can use as an octave board oh, yeah, that okay. you can set kind of like highs and lows. But in the app, there's also a, a like a computer-based program that people make these sounds, and then you can just grab them and use them into your set. Uh, I pretty much grabbed it, and I didn't really change anything. It just sounds awesome. And uh, usually I'll have all both of my reverbs and both of my delays just to totally wash it out, like, just so much. <laughs> so next in line, got the Ventress. Dual reverb, it's a dual DSP. Uh, it's really awesome. You can have one or two uh, reverbs at a time. You can run them cascade or parallel. I pretty much run them cascade every time. My main reverb sound for that album is a mix of the lo fi reverb that they have and the E Dome, which is just a really nice, thick. That's what else it's on. Yeah. So much reverb. It's a dual foot switch and I just run a regular cable to each of the pedals and what you can do is you can have up to eight 
presets and what I did is I just I put them in line for the set so I would have some of the same reverbs show up but all I have to do is just as I'm going through the songs just all right I need reverb one reverb two for the solo or the verse or something like that and there's this really cool one it's like uh, it's offspring and mod verb so the mod verb is like a pretty much modeled after like a typical amp reverb and a typical amp tremolo and then the offspring you get this weird like right so I do like as you as you lay into it a little bit more you'll you'll start to hear that got the right so. Next in line, we got the Canyon Delay, super great pedal. I went into George's Music, plug, uh, and uh, in North Wales, and I did a shootout with, with Big George, and uh, I had an MXR Carbon Copy Deluxe, I had a flashback out, and I had something else, I forget what it was, and I was doing a shout out, and like, he was just like, you know what, just try it, just try the, try the Canyon, and I was like, oh, you know, I've seen some videos of it, but it's such a good, such a good, good pedal. The foot switch is a tap tempo, which is great because you're not you know you're never gonna get that functionality out of a, a single space delay. And when I when I use this for live, I have it just just on the edge of oscillation and in between songs, I'll just kinda let it <laughs> so get to do stuff like that and then for the album I did not have this oceans yet I had a Hall of Fame 2 which was great because it's got the mash button uh, but I took that off because oceans 11 is fantastic this one I'm mean, using it as a shim shimmer reverb and, uh, in the one song I'll use both the chorus and that shim. They say that it's a, a clear, clean 20 dB boost, but I think it kind of rolls off the highs a little bit, which is nice because if you have all this reverb and delay and you're just going to boost all this high end mm -hmm. stuff, it'll start to kind of shrill and scream at you. But that one always holds up nice. It's a mini pedal and I got it in New York in some random little shop. Um, so what I'll do sometimes is even with the boost, yeah, and the depths, you can kind of push the amp to get like a, a to get it to like break up a little bit. So you can kind of dig into it and it'll break up and I'll actually use that sometimes as my overdrive, but you know, not use the OCD always. So, and then that's it. And I'm I'm going into a uh, a Vox AC15. I'm running a 15 watt amp <laughs> instead of uh, lugging around this this kind of stuff. It's a man's amp. 
Oh, uh, well, I got both. So you know, you're lugging around gear, going to play in some tiny ass stage in Philadelphia. This thing is great. You put it on the amp stand, you shoot it up. Half the time you're gonna get mic'd anyway. Yeah, right. And you push it as far as you, as I do. Uh, it'll break up. It breaks up nice. I mean, you guys know the the box yeah. the box tone. It's you know. Um, Top boost channel. Um, I'm probably one o'clock on treble and a little bit of bass, and the tone cut is actually it'll sweep. It's like an additive or subtractive tone cut. It's it's great. That's it. Our first little episode. You know, I'd love to do uh, gear reviews. If you guys want to bring in your junk and and kind of show off your pedals, just let me know. We can do it here, and uh, eventually, you know, I'd like to go to somebody who's headlining a show. And you know, if you want to, if you want to stay set up for twenty minutes or something like that, yeah, no, yeah. Scott and I will will run through your rigs, and uh, we can talk about your stuff, do your plug, uh, and I'll talk more. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Know. And that's it. Uh, we hope to see you guys soon.